Hello everyone, uh, Stepan here. Uh, today I'm going to continue the series on the Sicilian defense with one of my favorite uh, attacking setups for white. Uh, this variation uh, is quite uncommon compared to some other ways uh, to fight black in the Sicilian. And I'm not sure many people uh, that play the Sicilian know this very well, so it might be a good surprise weapon for those of you uh, who face the E6 uh, Sicilian. So, uh, that's the Kramnik variation, named of course after Vladimir Kramnik, the great uh, Russian uh, Grandmaster, world champion and one of the best players in history. It was played before, uh, but uh, not to such a great extent and uh, not so well, definitely. Uh, not by mistake either, but uh, nobody has contributed to the theory of the opening that much. Now the variation is great because there are basically only two, two lines which you have to remember well, and uh, white can hardly ever be worse after the opening. That's at least uh, what, uh, what I think and what the engines think. You don't have such a huge opening advantage if black plays well, but uh, well, if you remember 10 or 15 moves you are going to be okay. So let's start. Uh, after e4, c5, knight to f3, uh, black plays e6. And now uh, in normal uh, Sicilian, such as uh, the Khan Sicilian, the Paulson Sicilian, the Taimanov Sicilian, and uh, some other variations, uh, white will play d4 here, open up the position. And after black plays a6 or knight to c6, uh, white can then play c4 and create a Marozzi bind. Now uh, in the Kramnik Sicilian, uh, uh, you play c4 immediately on move 3, so after e6 you play c4. And this is now the Kramnik uh, variation of the Sicilian defense, and there's basically nothing black can do to avoid this after e6. Well, uh, if you play c4, you've played c4, you enter the variation. And now you can already see the, the features of the, of the variation, and that's the fact that uh, black can hardly play d5. Uh, well, you are preventing it with two pawns. Uh, White's plan is commonly to reinforce the d5 square with the, uh, the move knight to c3 and the move bishop to e3 if that's ever allowed, uh, mainly to play bishop to e2 and to castle king side. So that's White's setup. It's similar to what you would do in the in the English attack or in the Yugoslav attack. Uh, but with the exception of your knight uh, being on c3 after you play c4. So it's a very strong attacking setup in which the only major downside is the fact that your bishop is hemmed in on f1 or on e2. And especially if you exchange the pawn after d4, cd4, knight d4, f3, then your bishop doesn't really have any scope from the e2 square. On the other hand, if you develop it to d3, then your queen uh, has less scope as well. Uh, now, to this move, uh, black basically has only one response and uh, you are going to see only one move in more than 90% of your games and that's knight to c6, that's stopping, uh, sort of stopping the, the d4 push. And uh, here, uh, this is where the, where the position branches out. White can choose to play either aggressively or passively from this position. I believe that both variations uh, lead to a slight advantage for white. The only thing is that the more aggressive variation could lead to a big advantage for white if black isn't careful. Uh, after I finish uh, covering the basic ideas and the theory, I'm going to show you one game in which uh, Vladimir Kramnik himself defeated Gary Kasparov. It was played in 96 and uh, he chose the more aggressive line. And in my games, I've always uh, chosen the, the more aggressive line I'm about to show you. I played one game in a tournament in Krakow uh, in Poland in 2016, in which I faced a uh, 21-something uh, national master from Ukraine, and I played this variation. Uh, he ended up winning, but uh, I was much better after the opening. He didn't, uh, he didn't really know the theory, but I lost in the middle game anyway. So it's a very tough opening for uh, stronger players to crack if white knows what he's doing. Now, uh, let me go over the more passive line first, and that's the move knight to c3. Uh, with knight to c3, you are reinforcing the d5 push. You are defending your e4 pawn in advance of knight uh, to f6 being played. And it's a basic, normal developing move. Now here, uh, uh, black can choose either to play e5, closing down the position, or knight to f6, which will basically transpose because black is going to play both moves anyway. So it doesn't really matter what he plays first. If black goes for e5, you're going to play d3 and then knight to f6. 
and if black plays knight to f6 first then bishop to e2 e5 is going to play be played in almost all of the games now if black doesn't play e5 uh, you shouldn't really be playing e5 yourself the difference is that you can play d4 opening up the position so let's say black plays something passive such as bishop to e7 then you can play d4 and after this uh, you are okay, I mean, this is what you wanted to achieve anyway, let's say black castles here, you castle, uh, queen c7, bishop to e3, uh, and this is your normal setup, which you which you were trying to achieve anyway, so this is how the games could go. Uh, there's a, a pattern in these positions, which you should remember, which can also be applied to some positions in the in the dragon and the accelerated dragon, and that's when you have a Marozzi bind created, you can play the move. Uh, wait, let's give a, a bad move to white, uh, let's say bishop to b7, you can play the move knight to d5, and now that's not really a peace sacrifice, because if black takes, you are going to be better after he moves the knight, if he doesn't uh, move the knight, he's going to lose it, if he does move it, then he loses the queen, so you're going to get your piece back with a slight edge, and the, the pawn on d7 is going to be weak, even if the pawn is on d6, it's going to be a weakness anyway. So remember that. So after knight to f6, bishop to e2, e5 should be played by black. If black doesn't play uh, e5, then you should push through with d4. Now it's of course impossible. So white continues with castling. Uh, black goes on to castle as well to develop the pieces. Bishop to e7, d3, uh, castles. And now uh, the key move from this position uh, to ensure that you get your attack in faster than black does. Uh, even though you are weakening the d4 square, is the move knight to e1. Now, of course, black could jump into d4 immediately. It's not wise, though. It's better to develop his pieces first. And you are preparing the push f4. So now after, d after d6, opening up the bishop, uh, white plays f4. And now you can see that uh, white uh, is uh, faster in the attack. And you are going to at least open up the f-file at your own leisure and uh, have some attacking chances. Now the knight can, of course, return to f3 uh, after the move f4 has been played. The knight isn't going to be stuck on e1. It's not useful defending c2 or d3. So remember this key maneuver, uh, so knight, knight to e1, f4, knight back to f3, that's, that's your attacking chance in, in this position. Now, uh, here black could try some queenside counterplay with a move such as a6, and you play a4, never mind that uh, the knight could jump into b4, because it doesn't really do that much here, the, the d3 pawn is significantly over-defended. For now, uh, so black is most commonly going to play knight to d4, and you play knight to uh, knight to f3. Now, if black wants to give up his great knight for your horrible bishop on e2, which is your worst piece in these positions, then that's fine. Um, you're never going to see that, unfortunately. So yeah, he's not going to take. Black is normally playing h6 here to prevent knight to g5, and you just continue your development. Bishop to d2. Uh, e takes f4 should be played after the bishop is developed because white just lost the tempo so e takes f4 bishop takes f4 bishop d7 uh, and now you can uh, take here and recapture with the c pawn after you move your knight to d5 that's uh, one of the best plans so exchanging some pieces and getting rid of black's best piece so knight takes d4 c takes d4 knight to d5 knight takes d5 c takes d5 always recapture towards the center now you still have two central pawns and black has uh, a problematic pawn structure, as you can see, black has two isolated uh, doubled pawns on the d-file. Now, uh, the engines would tell you that the position is equal, both sides have the bishop pair, both sides have some weaknesses, white has a weakness on d3, uh, black has a weakness on d6 and on d4, but I think it's much easier to play for white, even though black's light squared bishop is much better than yours, so that would be the downside uh, of the position for white. Now in this position, uh, well, you could choose several things uh, which you could do with black. I think one of the best moves, uh, moves is bishop to g5. Uh, remember not to take the d6 pawn. This would lead to an advantage for black. Just play uh, queen to e1, uh, trying to get your queen into the attack to g3. So after bishop takes f4, rook takes f4, queen b6, b4, uh, let's say rook a to c8. The position is pretty much equal, but as I said, black has two permanent weaknesses. You have only one and... Uh, well, black has a better bishop. So remember that after bishop to g5, uh, you play queen to e1. If you play bishop takes d6, then after bishop takes a4, attacking your queen, queen takes a4, uh, black doesn't have to recapture your bishop immediately. He can uh, put in a check with bishop to e3, check, and after king to h1, then recapture. And I think that uh, black is slightly better in this position. 
Firstly, he got rid of uh, one of his doubled pawns, uh, the material is equal and his bishop is probably the best minor piece on the board. Well, not the best minor piece, probably the best piece on the board, I would say that it's, uh, it's stronger than white's rooks. So yeah, uh, this would be uh, the line with knight to c3 on move 4 for white. As I said, uh, you should uh, carefully plan your attacking strategy. The good news is that you basically only have one, uh, which is uh, the best in the position. Uh, remember that you don't have to be afraid to trade the knights on d4. Remember that if uh, black doesn't push e5, either on move 5 or on move 4, then you should strike with d4 in the center, seizing the opportunity to open up the position. So after e5, you just castle and you go for a plan of knight to e1, f4, and uh, after you stop queenside counterplay, just put your knight back to f3, exchange on d4, put your knight on d5. Uh, after black exchanges, uh, you capture with a c pawn and black is going to have two weaknesses, you are going to have one. And white should always be okay in these positions. I don't see how white could be worse if he knows the theory thus far up until move 10 or 12. So, okay, uh, this is the line which promises white a slight edge, but nothing major. Now let's go back. After the move knight to c6, so c4, uh, the Kramnik Sicilian uh, knight to c6, I think a far better move, but a far riskier move as well, if you don't know what you are doing, is the move d4. And uh, d4 is... Uh, trying to exploit the fact that uh, black couldn't over defend the d4 square so black still didn't have time to play the move uh, the move uh, e5 and another thing is that uh, because black played e6 um, of course the the move knight to f6 hadn't been played yet so your pawn uh, on e4 isn't weak which doesn't really apply to positions with d6, knight to f6. So, yeah, you should strike with d4 immediately. That would definitely be my recommendation instead of knight to c3, even though this position is harder to play and you are, uh, well, you will often find yourself in tactical games which are hard to calculate and in which uh, an opponent stronger than you is going to have a clear edge because he is more experienced and faster in calculation. Now here black of course has one move, black should never allow the move d5, uh, so c takes d4, you recapture with the knight of course, knight takes d4 and now knight to f6, uh, attacking your e4 weakness. Uh, the move f3 uh, doesn't really work, I'm going to show you why, uh, you have to defend with knight to c3. If after uh, knight to f6 you play the move f3, uh, if black continues passively, then you are fine. I mean, uh, well, what can black do? Black, black can play, let's say, this, and you can defend like this. And black is, uh, well, black dis didn't seize the moment uh, to to use his uh, to use his advantage. He had one chance. So after the move f3, black should sacrifice a piece for three pawns. And this pattern you might have seen already. It's common in e6 Sicilians, in which the queen is already open uh, to the attack on the h4 d8 diagonal. So now in this position, black should play knight takes e4, and after f takes e4, queen to h4 check, uh, king to e2 is the best move, queen takes e4 check, uh, bishop to e3 covering up, defending the, the knight, which was now attacked twice, bishop to c5, triple attacking, knight to c2, defending, queen to c4 check, grabbing the third pawn, queen to d3, queen g4, king e1, bishop takes c3, queen takes c3, castles, knight to c3, and... Uh, well, uh, I would never want to have this position with the white pieces, even though I have a piece for three pawns, which is better in theory. Uh, your king is stuck in the center, uh, black's queen is active, black is uh, fast to play the move d5, uh, perhaps b6 and uh, bishop to b7, and pressure, uh, pressure you along the long diagonal, and, uh, well, even the move such as f5, f4 could be deadly. So I definitely wouldn't recommend playing f3 after the move knight to f6, because... Well, knight takes e4 is not a deadly threat. Uh, according to the engines, the position is sort of equal, but, well, I would just rather have black here. The material is equal. You have three pawns for the piece as black, but you, you are attacking, which is always e easier than to defend. So after the move, uh, knight to f6, you should defend your pawn with the move knight to c3. Now, there's a clear downside to this. Black can immediately play, immediately play bishop to b4. And now there's only one way to defend this position, and this you have to play precisely. You have to take the knight on c6. Uh, once you take the knight on c6, uh, if uh, black decides to take here, then you simply recapture, and after black uh, captures, then you can play f3. This doesn't really work anymore. 
uh, because uh, there aren't that many pawns to grab and there aren't any attacking pieces so uh, white is just better here I believe that after uh, after f3, black should just continue with castling and just leave UB in the attack. Now you have the bishop pair and uh, black has, okay, black has uh, more central pawns, but your doubled pawns along the c-file can actually come in handy. So I don't think that's a problem. Uh, so that after knight to c3, bishop to b4, knight takes c6, I believe that bishop takes c3 isn't a good move. Uh, black should choose between b takes c6 and d takes c6. Those are the two main moves. Now let's go over b takes c6, which is uh, stronger. But yeah, well, let's do d takes c6 first. Now after d takes c6, you can obviously uh, exchange the queens and relinquish uh, black's castling rights. So now queen takes d8, king takes d8. You play bishop to d2, uh, not allowing uh, uh, black to double your pawns. If black takes here, bishop takes, knight takes c4, you can take... Uh, on g7, so you are not going a pawn down, so that works. Uh, so in this position, black should play e5, restraining your pieces and not allowing e5 from white, which was actually a threat in this position. So here, uh, black should, white should, I'm sorry, castle queenside. Uh, once again, this doesn't work. Uh, black can't grab the, the pawn here. Well, actually, hmm, wait. Now you are losing an exchange. Let me just check this. Wait, let me see. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, this is with check. I'm sorry. Yeah, after after Black Castle, it doesn't work because uh, he castled, so it's with check. So yeah, this doesn't work. So after castles, uh, Black should play King to C7, and now this is a threat. Uh, so you play F3, and after the move F3, uh, Black should continue with Bishop to C5. Uh, b4, uh, this is a tactical idea because after bishop takes b4 you can play knight to b5 check and after c b5 bishop takes b4, b takes c4, you can play bishop takes c4, bishop e6, uh, bishop takes e6, f6, bishop d6 check, king to d8, bishop takes e5 and you can see that white has a clear edge in this position. Uh, firstly, you have the bishop, which has much more scope in this position when all the diagonals are open. Secondly, black has a weakness on the e6 square and, uh, well, black is a tempo down. Uh, it's hard to calculate, but at least uh, white will have another move after this check. So I think that the, that the move d takes c6 should be played carefully by black. Of course, you have huge drawing chances because you exchange the queens, but uh, I think that white is always going to have a slight edge. I'm not sure how black can win this position un unless uh, white blunders. So after knight takes c6, I would definitely recommend the move b takes c6 for black. Firstly, you are capturing towards the center. Uh, you are strengthening uh, the, the d5 break, which can actually be played soon enough. And uh, yeah, you are not, you are not exchanging the queens, so that's uh, a far better move. Now in this position, uh, the move which saves white from losing a pawn is bishop to d3. You are accepting, of course, doubled pawns along the c-file. If, if black wants to give up the bishop pair, that's not such a huge problem. You have defended your e4 pawn. Uh, once again, the move f3 wouldn't work because of this tactic. Uh, so if instead of bishop to d3 you'd played uh, f3, then knight takes c4, uh, f takes c4, queen h4, check, etc., as I've shown you before. But in this position, uh, black can choose the opportunity to play the move d5. And, uh, well, this is once again a spot in which you have to be careful. You can easily go wrong. Uh, the best way to capture here is to play e takes d5, uh, opening up uh, a possibility for a check along the e-file. And black should play e takes d5 here. Uh, so after e takes d5, e takes d5, you should castle. Firstly, you are un unpinning your knight, so now this uh, could be sort of a threat. And black's king is still in the center, so any attacks along the e-file could be deadly. Uh, black, uh, well, black should play d takes c4 here. And now, uh, of course, you can recapture the pawn immediately. I think a much better move is to play queen to e2 check, just declining a queen trade. And after queen to e7, you can either capture the queen uh, if uh, black wants to defend like that. If black defends with the bishop, uh, well, I think he will be better because he is uh, un undeveloping his piece. So now, well, I prefer to take here. So queen e7, king e7, uh, rook to e1 check uh, as an intermezzo check develop your piece bishop to e6 and now bishop takes c4 this is sort of the beginning of the variation uh, the material is of course equal uh, black can uh, 
double your pawns here and get a completely symmetrical position so it's not such a strong attacking position for white but you should always have a slight edge because you already have a rook developed and uh, black's king is pinned so here uh, i think that black should play rook h to e8 preparing to play uh, king to f8 and you can use the opportunity to exchange the bishops to your advantage here with bishop e6 f6 uh, isolating uh, black's e pawn and uh, yeah, bishop to d2, now black can't even uh, double your pawns along the c-file. I, I think even though the engines give this position as uh, almost all zeros, I would prefer white always because look at your pawn structure. Uh, at least in any endgame uh, you are going to be able to put black in Zugzwang, you have a lot of pawn moves uh, to play. And you have two weaknesses to target, three in fact, yeah. So I, I would always rather have white here. And this is the best possible scenario for, for white if black plays perfectly. So black could make a mistake far sooner uh, than this. Let me just show you what the position could continue like. So rook a to d8, rook e2, bishop c5. You still have to be careful, of course. Knight to a4, uh, just getting the bishop away from the diagonal. Uh, bishop, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, bishop to d4. And now... Uh, the move uh, bishop to c3 uh, shouldn't really be played, you shouldn't really uh, exchange the pieces. Rook to c1 is a far more active move, your b2 pawn is defended. And yeah, I believe that this position is, is better for white. And this is where I would like to stop with the theory. Uh, because I think the, the main ideas have been shown. Uh, so just remember that after knight to f3, e6, uh, c4, knight to c6 is always going to be, be played. Uh, if it isn't played, then it means that black sort of made a mistake. Uh, well, yeah, because if uh, knight to c6 isn't played, d4 is a much stronger move. And now you can choose to play either uh, knight to c3 or d4. I would recommend the move d4 against stronger players and against weaker players. Perhaps play knight to c3 if you have a, an opponent whose strength is similar to yours and you are expecting a long positional grind, so knight to c3 could be a good move. Against stronger opponents, d4 is an aggressive move which could bring a lot of fun, and against weaker opponents, well, it's the best way to, to crush them fast. Okay, uh, now let's go over one of Vladimir Kramnik's game in the position, games in the position. Uh, so e4 uh, by Vladimir Kramnik, his opponent is Gary Kasparov and uh, in, uh, yeah, sorry, it was played in 1994, uh, Gary Kasparov was 28.05, Kramnik was 27.10, so Kasparov was about 100 points higher rated, playing with the black pieces, uh, c5, knight f3, e6, c4, knight to c6, and Kramnik plays d4 here. We have cd4, knight takes d4, knight to f6, of course, knight to c3, and the bishop to b4, as I said, and now uh, knight takes c6, uh, Kasparov took with the b-pawn, of course, which is a better move, bishop to d3, this was all seen, this is all the main line, e5, uh, once again, uh, one, of the, one of the better moves, uh, of course, uh, black would also castle in this position, or play the move d5, so this is another possibility you have to calculate. I just think that the move d5 is is, uh, is much stronger because you are resolving the central tension. But if you are uh, playing this position with the black pieces and your opponent is much weaker, then the move e5 could actually be a good way to keep the tension in the position and not to exchange the pieces. Now both sides castled. Bishop to e3 was played. Uh, d6. Of course, black still has one extra central pawn. Knight a4, uh, this is a strange move, a move which I really couldn't understand and, I, and I've never been able to use it in my own games, but Vladimir Kramnik knows better, of course. Uh, now d5 was played because the move knight to a4 is weakening the, the d5 square, so I'm not really sure that's, that's a good idea. Uh, d5, e takes d5, c takes d5, a3, chasing the bishop away, bishop to e7, c takes d5, knight takes d5, and now bishop to c5, offering a trade of dark squared bishops, knight to f6, rook e1. And here I believe that white stands an edge. Of course, both sides have the bishop pair. Uh, however, uh, black pawns on e5 and on a7 aren't as good as white's 2-1 to -one majority on the, on the queen side, which can be utilized uh, easily if black isn't careful. And secondly, black's bishop pair is staring at white's king side, so that's another advantage, I would say. In this position, though, Kasparov decided to exchange, so knight takes c5, queen b6. And I'm not going to go into too much, too much detail, I'm just going to show you how the game uh, went, just to give you an idea of how the Kramnik Sicilian could be played. 
you can see that it's a fairly open position in which uh, both sides, of course, uh, are given the opportunity to blunder horribly. Uh, but uh, if you are careful, you should be okay. I think this is now a huge advantage for white, this pawn on b4, and it's, this is actually what I like about the position. And this is what often arises from the Kramnik Sicilian for white, that you are going to have a passed pawn on the on the queen side, while black will have a 4-3 to three pawn majority on the king side, with your king and at least uh, one or two pieces defending. So uh, white could cause trouble uh, to black's position soon enough with this pawn. Uh, here, uh, Kasparov continued with queen to b8, the, uh, attacking the pawn on b4, rook b1, rook a7, bishop c4, queen e5, knight to d3, queen c7, knight to f4. Uh, hmm. Yeah, of course, uh, the bishop can't be taken here because the rook is hanging. Uh, I got lost for a second, so the queen can't take the bishop. Rook b7, now it would work, bishop f1, bishop f5, b5, uh, pushing the pawn forward, g5. 92. Yeah, I mean, it's not winning, but uh, if anybody stands an edge, then it's definitely white. Uh, and here, now this already is winning. This is now more than plus one, because uh, white's passed pawn is actually a strong uh, trump card in the position, and white is going to have a free king in the attack, while black is going to have to guard uh, the b pawn from advancing. And yeah, in this position, after uh, Kramnik tactically gave up a pawn, this is now just winning. So yeah, I don't want to go any further. Some, uh, well, around here, uh, Gary Kasparov resigned and uh, Kramnik won the game. So remember that uh, here, after knight to c6, d4 is the most aggressive move. After cd4, knight d4, knight f6, knight to c3, never play f3, play knight to c3. Black is going to play bishop to b4. You have to take on c6. If black takes with the d pawn, exchange the queens. If he takes with the b pawn, play bishop to d3 to prevent uh, black from winning the e4 pawn. And here you have to be prepared for e5 and d5. d5 is going to end up exchanging some pieces and d5 is going to provide you with a more, uh, well, fighting game. Uh, but both are okay. So, yeah, uh, I wanted to show you this position even though I... Uh, decided not to cover a lot of minor variations of the Sicilian, of the Sicilian such as the Kramnik variation, because I believe this is actually a great way for White to fight the Sicilian. And uh, on the, uh, secondly, uh, many players with the black pieces uh, aren't familiar with this line, so try it in your own games and I hope uh, it goes well. Definitely uh, let me know in the comments below if you have seen this, if you have played this, if you have any improvements to suggest, any great games to suggest. And let me know what you think. Uh, okay, uh, I will continue with another variation of the Sicilian tomorrow. Uh, thanks very much for watching. I hope you got something from this video. And stay tuned for more chess. See you later. Bye.